Greetings, I'm Ted Nichols, wildlife biologist with the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. You know, Canada goose harvest management has always been a contentious topic, and that's largely because we have three different populations of Canada geese that occur here during fall and winter. First off, we have resident population geese, which are abundant all throughout the state, all during the year. They're defined as birds that breed anywhere south of the 48 degree parallel line in southern Canada. Second population we have is Atlantic population Canada geese, which breed on the Ungava Peninsula of northern Quebec. We also have North Atlantic population geese, which breed further east, mostly in Labrador and Newfoundland, and have an affinity to winter along the Atlantic coast. During fall and winter, resident population geese occur all over the state. And continuing into 2022, all Atlantic population zones in New Jersey and the Atlantic Flyway, and even in Canada, will have reduced bag limits. In the U.S., all areas will have a one bird daily bag limit, that which means we'll have a one bird bag limit in both the north and south zones. Now I know this is painful for all waterfowl hunters, but it will result in a more rapid recovery of Atlantic population Canada geese. Given that fewer hunters will be willing to set up exclusively for geese, say in a field situation, we've timed our Canada goose seasons to occur concurrent with the duck seasons in all zones. In a different step in the coastal zone, which contains North Atlantic population Canada geese, the Canada goose season will be, for the duration of the duck season, it will be a two bird bag limit. Canada goose populations are based on their breeding areas. Geese that breed south of 48 degrees latitude all through the Atlantic Flyway and southern Canada are considered resident population geese. Geese that breed through the boreal forest, but especially in the sub-tundra areas along Hudson Bay and Ungava Bay of northern Quebec are considered Atlantic population geese. Further east, birds that breed in the boreal forest of Labrador and Newfoundland are considered North American population geese, and they have an affinity to winter near coastal areas in Canada and the U.S. Now, Canada goose hunting zones are based on the preponderant wintering population based on banding data throughout the Atlantic Flyway. Now, resident population geese are abundant and they're above goal. North Atlantic population geese, areas in New England, parts of Long Island and coastal New Jersey, that's a relatively stable population has been so for quite some time. Further inland, the brown areas, the Atlantic population zones, those geese have been doing poorly and they're well below their population goal. Accordingly, in 2022, resident population zones have liberal seasons, generally an 80-day season with a five-bird bag limit. North Atlantic population zones have moderate seasons, a 60-day two-bird bag or 70 and three season. AP zones, however, given the poor status of AP geese, have very restrictive seasons with a 30-day season and one bird bag. After some tough times prior to 2000, AP Canada geese have been relatively stable from about 2000 to about 2010, with a population that's been bouncing around just below 200,000 breeding periods. Since 2010, however, they've done pretty poorly. And in 2020 and in 2021, in fact, no surveys were even done because of COVID concerns. Rather, populations were estimated based on an integrated population model. So why have AP Canada geese been doing so poorly? Well, it's simply that they have not experienced good productivity in the past 10 years. This graphic shows productivity of Atlantic population geese during banding drives. Although the productivity index on the y-axis isn't that important, note that the dashed line shows the long-term average productivity. And you can see from the late 90s up until about 2010, that productivity index was bouncing around the long-term average. However, since 2010, notice that that productivity index has chronically been below the long-term average with the exception of 2017. And in fact, in 2018, you can see there's almost a complete production bust or no production of young, which certainly thwarts the growth of any population. So you might say, well, what about global warming and all these things that we've been reading about that's occurring in the Arctic? That should be good for Arctic geese, right? If you look at recent climate change report from Canada, you can see that 
pretty much the whole country of Canada and in particular Arctic areas have experienced warming climates in the past 70 years. And it really has been manifested most heavily since the 1970s. But if you drill down a little bit deeper and look at the timing of when all that warm conditions in the Arctic occur, you can see that a lot of it occurs with much, much warmer winters. Of course, that's a time period when geese are not in the Arctic as well as during the fall. And if you drill right down into the weeds really deep here in the spring, you'll notice that the Eastern Canadian Arctic, particularly the Ungava Peninsula of Northern Quebec and Southern Baffin Island and that whole area around Fox Basin, the Northern part of Hudson Bay, you can see that not only has spring Arctic conditions there been average to poor in a lot of the time they're showing much colder than normal temperatures. And of course, spring weather conditions is essentially what drives young production in any given year for Arctic nesting geese. And this is why we've been experiencing such poor productivity, both for AP Canada geese, but Atlantic Brant as well. So what does all this mean for 2022? Mid-Atlantic and New England states and their AP zones be reduced to a 30-day season with a one-bird bag. Closer to home here in New Jersey, during the regular season in AP areas, which is the north and south zones, will have that 30-day and one-bird bag season. But because the coastal zone is predominantly North Atlantic population geese, that will remain at a 60-day season with a two-bird bag which will be concurrent with the duck season. Since September and special winter seasons target resident geese, there'll be no change to those seasons. And it's worth noting or pointing out that not only is this occurring in the United States, but Atlantic population zones in Quebec and Ontario will also be seeing reduced bag limits. So all AP zones of this shared resource in the US and Canada will share in the pain. And of course the ultimate goal of cutting this season is to rebuild numbers of AP Canada geese through higher survival of reduced hunting seasons. Despite the overabundance of resident geese, wildlife managers have the responsibility to maintain populations of Arctic nesting geese for sport hunters in the US and Canada, Inuit and Cree nations in the Canadian Arctic, and for wildlife viewers in both countries. Additionally, maintaining the historic and genetic biodiversity of these continental migrant goose populations is important and can only be achieved if impacted states and Canadian provinces work together cooperatively. Because the regular season, that is the traditional season from November to January, occurs when all these different Canada goose populations are mixed together. It is the regular season, including the season length and bag limit, that is manipulated the most often to ensure that migrant geese remain healthy for future generations to enjoy. The good news is that the Atlantic population appears to be responding. After a two-year hiatus due to COVID, surveys and banding in the Atlantic population breeding range were implemented in 2022. The population is now increasing and it appears that the recent belt tightening with hunting regulations has helped grow this population. Further, 2022 was a good young production year for Arctic nesting geese all across the eastern Canadian Arctic. That is the exact shot in the arm that this population needed at this critical point in time. We are confident that season length and bag limit in Atlantic population zones will be liberalized next year. We remain hopeful for at least continued average production, which will ensure that this liberalized season can remain sustainable for years to come. Thanks for your interest in waterfowl management here in the Atlantic Flyway. <laughs>